So the first show I did was Britain's Next Top Model. I had no ambition to be on television. It was totally unexpected. Well, what did you think was going to happen? Did you not think you'd have to go out and walk and show your body off? But I was at a dinner party and was sitting next to the guy who turned out to be the exec producer of the show. So I was invited to be a judge on it. I really like it as an image. I'd really like to have seen more of your face. But I think that's very respectful of you and reserved of you to actually care about getting a nice image and in an artistic mm. form. I worked on it for three series. She's got a good face. Mm. From the waist down, mm. that picture's a disaster. Mm. Cared a lot about the contestants. You've got to get over it at some point or else you're not going to have a hope in hell of winning this competition, are you? And I hope imparted my expertise and knowledge to it. And it was just a lot of fun, actually. I walked off the end. <laughs> I just kept walking. <laughs> I'm sure you weren't pushed. Then the head of diversity at the BBC gave me a call and said they were working on a new show with disabled girls. And it was called Britain's Missing Top Model, which I thought was a bit derivative. However, <laughs> it was a very challenging show. I don't want you to always think that bad feedback means that you're going. You're in it, so sell it. I don't care if you're flat chested. You've got to subtly show it off, do it elegantly. What also appealed to me was the fact that they asked me to be a mentor to the girls and not a judge, and I was really ready for that change. So listen you, skin and teeth again, but they've seen a change. Mm -hmm. So let's keep that change up, okay, yes. with your next shoot. And it was nice to be with the girls throughout their entire experience. And I gained a lot from that. The show won several awards. It was critically acclaimed, and everybody that worked in it was very excited to be a part of it and um, very proud of it. You know, will we ever see five disabled models on one catwalk ever again? I don't know. The reality is, after this competition, I'm hoping that I may go to a show and we might even see one disabled girl on the catwalk, and that's progress. From there, I went and did a show called Naked. You're going to be models. You're going to be on a catwalk and you will be naked. Mm. No! Sorry! What? It was a confidence building course, so essentially each week we had a different set of contestants from different walks of life. So week one was nurses, then we had taxi drivers, estate agents, office workers, and they were all set a naked challenge at the end of the week. It's going to be heart-wrenching, it's going to be emotionally challenging, it's going to be physically challenging, there's going to be a live audience, and you're going to do a full Monty routine. <laughs> and it was my job to get them to the point of becoming more confident people and being able to attack the challenge and actually gain from it. Hey, well done. Well, I didn't even think they realised they were dancing. It was like a chorus line. It was a fussy routine, wasn't it? And they took to it so quickly. Bye. I haven't run since I was about to. But let's face it, they're in a room, they're walking up and down it with a nice bit of music and a bra top. The reality <laughs> is a lot harder. Hello? Ooh, you alright? <laughs> that, to me, is the joy and the strength of television. Jonathan, what are you thinking? Are you loving it? I'm loving it. I'm loving the, uh, the hint of mint at the end of it, actually. Mm. It's really fresh. It's like after this long winter, it's a bit of spring on a plate, isn't it? It's uh, lovely. You know, just like Bill himself. Yeah. <laughs> of course, my other big passion in life is food. I love shortbread. I love banoffee. I love crumble. I love ice cream. I've got a terrible sweet tooth. I have you. So this mm. is going to be good for you, though. It's my favourite thing. I entered a competition years ago called The People's Cookbook using one of my mother's recipes and she just died and I really wanted her to be remembered and I thought the way that she expressed herself was through her food and I thought that was a really nice way of honouring her memory. So of course I entered it and I won it <laughs> and as a result I was um, asked to appear on Market Kitchen and then they always asked me back. Okay, we're not going to have little dainties, but we can go and have a macho do with a glass of whiskey and, and play a board game. Yeah. And a board game? Why well, does this count as around and gossip? <laughs> well, I admit to gossiping, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I've cooked on it. It's a messy dish like all of my food, but it's about sitting down, hey. tucking in and having a good time with it. Talked about global food trends. Well, you'd need a lot of guinea pigs to feed a family of six, wouldn't yeah. you? And this could quite <laughs> easily. <laughs> Interviewing celebrities and their favourite dishes. <laughs> so there we are, at my Texas Lane Star Chicken with Guyanese cook up <laughs> How does it match up to Texan fried chicken? Much better. And can you talk about what people do on Easter Sunday in Czechoslovakia? Bring it on, I will learn it and I'll do it. I'll tell you what, <laughs> why don't you put the garnish on? Have you ever seen my garnishing skills? <laughs> 
Part of me feels that my TV journey was all about getting to the point of the Marchioness documentary. And I kind of knew at that point it was going to be a make or break in my career. I thought, well, maybe I never will want to do anything in television again. Jonathan Pang is one of the most well-connected men in the world of fashion and a familiar face on television. To those who have met him, he comes across as a confident and successful man. But 20 years ago, he was at a birthday celebration that turned into one of the worst disasters in living memory. The Marchioness had been chartered for a private birthday party, but what should have been all-night celebrations turned to panic and terror soon after the cruise downriver got underway. Her owners said the collision was like a bicycle being run over by a lorry, tipping party guests out into the darkness and the fast-flowing water of the Thames. 51 people died on the Marchioness. Jonathan organized the party. I printed the invitations, I made all the bookings, I brought a lot of people together. When I think about how much my life has changed as a result of it, it's harder than I thought it was going to be. It was a deeply personal and poignant journey to make, and a hard one. And I really had to visit dark, deep places within me. And it took about eight months in total from beginning to end, and it kept stopping and starting, and it consumed my life. But um, I realised at the end of it that there were issues that I needed to face. I needed the team atmosphere to actually make me feel obliged to see it through. I think of myself as a team player, and because they put that trust in me, I felt I really had to deliver something strong. And I think we delivered a very special film. It's our time. After seeing me lay my soul open and probably cry a lot, and I thought, how are people going to deal with me now? So after doing that, I did take a little back seat. However, I've just completed a show for BBC Three called Young Beautician of the Year, which again, it's about mentoring and it's about helping people get to the point that they dream of. I like to be spontaneous. I love life. This brings back memories for me. This is a typical Guyanese table. There's a few things missing, Mrs. Singh. There's no pepper pot, which does upset me. But with you two glamour and all of this in front of me, I will let it go, and I'm very happy. This looks lovely. What's in here? Actually, this a this a party roll, basically. It's a wrap, a roti wrap, mm. and it's a salad and a chicken stuffing inside. I love the unpredictability of life. I love people. I like their stories. I like mentoring people. I like helping people achieve their dreams and their goals. Why have you called it a Creole cuisine? What does Creole mean? We just throw everything together and create our own flavour. That's what it's about. So do you feel that the uh, Trinidad and Tobago cuisine is superior to the rest of the Caribbean, would you say? Well, being a Trinbigonian, I would say yes. Being a Trini. <laughs> I will say yes, of course. And I want to do jobs that I really am passionate about, that I can talk knowledgeably about and from the heart.